It's not often we common folk get to hang out with the richest man in Australia. Well, then Clive Palmer's no ordinary billionaire. He's a big bloke with a big heart and he's got a big dream he wants to sell. And if I were a rugby, a league or an Aussie rules boss, I'd start worrying right now. Clive Palmer wants to make the world game our game, to make soccer our national sport. And what Clive Palmer wants, he usually gets. He's already spent millions buying his own team and setting them up on the Gold Coast. And there's plenty more where that came from. No wonder kids are flocking to the sport in droves. He's an unlikely looking sporting hero, but Clive Palmer might well be the future of soccer in Australia. You may not have heard of the man, but everything about this baggy suited iron ore magnate is big. His enterprise, his size, and his plans for what they call the beautiful game. Do you love that electricity? I do, yeah, I love it. It's wonderful to discover something when your life's nearly over and say, yes, there is life after death, there is hope. Clive's now reckoned to be Australia's richest man, believed to be worth a staggering $12 billion. This A-list billionaire has just bought his own A-league soccer team outright. Gold Coast United. So Jason, how do you think we're going to go against that later? All right, all right. And in the style of a true football mogul, he's treating his players like rock stars. Oh, I like your egalitarian airline, Clive. Even the journos travel first class. Oh, I should too, yeah. A one-class airline. They're very important journos. <laughs> the private jets and the fleet of helicopters might seem extravagant, but don't worry, Clive can easily afford it. A tax bill like his Six million dollars for a football club is small change. We gave them a cheque last year for 70 million. We gave them another one last week for 49 million. Actually, that was my personal tax, and I didn't have enough zeros on the form. I couldn't, I couldn't fill it out. Can I say, on behalf of a grateful nation, thank you, Clive. It's a pleasure, Charles. Huh? It's a pleasure. Huh? It is too. <laughs> Life has bought into the biggest game in the world, with an incredible five billion fans across every continent. What a goal! And the big blokes determined to turn Australia into the world's next soccer giant. It's a game that's not based on violence or breaking, breaking your nose or getting the other guy. It's based on skill. And it's a game where Australia's ranked 16th in the world, and one day we could be ranked first. When you're with Clive Palmer, he calls the shots. Well, mate, you've certainly taken me a long way from the green fields of the East Coast. Well, it's worth it, uh, Charles. You're going to see where all of the gold and treasure of Australia is hidden and see what our future is for the next 50 years. Just hop in. And so we're on an 8,000 kilometre detour just because Clive wants to show us where the money comes from to pay for all his sporting largesse. Well, it's pretty cool hanging out with the richest man in Australia, Clive. Well, never mind. Uh, we have, have, have had a good time, and I think that's what life's about, joining it together. 25 years ago, Clive Palmer recognised a future bonanza in the striking gorges of the red earth of Western Australia's Pilbara up as much as he could. But here we've got over 160 billion tonnes of magnetite iron ore, the world's largest ore body. We're standing on the world's largest mineral ore body. That's right, we say this is the future for Australia. How does it feel to own something like this? Very tiring, Charles. I've been up here for 25 years. So. It's enterprise on a vast scale. Kilometres long and wide, Clive's gigantic money pit hold six billion tonnes of iron ore at $100 a tonne. Clive, even you are dwarfed by the scale of this operation. Well, I am. It's really daunting to come here and realise that, you know, 15 years ago we drew lines on a map and today they're becoming reality. Yeah. And what's the truck worth? Around $9 million uh, Australian. And here's the rub. Any of these trucks are worth more, are going to cost you more than, a, than owning your own football team. That's right. You know, I, 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 even the wheels, I think if we look at the consumption of tyres, 
that, that amounts for a lot more than the money we're losing on our football team. Gets it from Porter, and it's going to end up order of the net. Clive, who's doubled his wealth this year, knows a winner when he sees one. He likes to kick goals, and so far this year, that's what his team has been doing. Gold Coast United, in its first year in the A-League, hasn't lost a game. United! It's all right to hobnob with the owners, it's all right to hang out with the highly paid stars, but in the end, if soccer is going to make it in Australia, if it's going to rival or overtake the other codes, these are the people that matter. It's these people, the fans, who are going to drive the gun. There's a reason they call it the cup of life. There's a reason it's the world game. The world speaks football. It's the language of the world, and there's no other sport like it. And it just happens to be football. It's not so much the sport, but it's the culture, and it's just it's something else. And when Australia finally sees it, and when you go to a game, you can stand with your mates. There's no other sport like it. And no other sport, apparently, that the mums like so much. It's the approval of the so-called soccer mums that drives the game's growth. Years ago, there was just the Aussie rules football. Mm. But now, you see the soccer ball everywhere. The schools and um, on the Saturday and Sunday, mm. everyone's kicking the round ball as well. Yeah. Every weekend across Australia, more than 300,000 kids play soccer, making it the most played junior sport. How much time do you spend on uh, Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, Wednesday nights, Friday nights, Saturday mornings and Sunday games. And the stars come out early, like 13-year-old Trey O'Sullivan, who plans to be an Australian David Beckham. Uh, would you like to have a girlfriend like Victoria? Yeah, I would. Hey, That'd you're only 13. <laughs> How much money do you think you might make if your dream came true? Millions. Millions. Trillions. Yeah. yeah. Huge amounts of money, which you'll give back to your mum. Yep. Well, the For all the early mornings. Yeah, and all the broken plants in the backyard. <laughs> Trey has already tried out for top UK club Sheffield United. According to his coach, David O'Connor, he's up there with the best in the world. If I was to uh, predict that he will, he will go all the way, I think he's going to be a star. And has it a guess at the kind of money he could make? Oh, millions. Like millions. How many millions? Oh, you know, the sky's the limit. The, the, the money that they're making overseas now, he could end up with, um, you know, 40, 50 million before his career's finished. You know, and I hope he remembers his old coach if he does. <laughs> Everyone in Australia wants to live here and look at it. There they are. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, a winter's day, people are out there swimming, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll never have thought uh, I'd be here looking at this. Gold Coast star player Jason Kalina has already made his fortune playing in Europe. Clive Palmer lured him home to a transformed Australian soccer league with a modest million dollar paycheck. Less than he was getting in Holland, but given the sun, sand and glittering lifestyle, not a bad trade. Money's not everything, um, happiness is. I, I, I love playing football and, and for me coming back to Australia was a new challenge in my career. I, I gave up a lot of money to come back here but you know that's life, that's football and um, it was something um, I was looking for. Jason certainly no unsung hero. Down at the Dog and Parrot, the musical Gold Coast supporters lord his name. These vulgar hymns of praise have always been part of the overseas soccer culture. Now they're as Australian as a schooner of 4X gold. Oh, Jason Kalina, you are the love of my life. Jason Kalina, I'd let you shag my wife. <laughs> It's a delicate little lyric. It is, and my, my wife's not going to be too happy about it. Is it still a buzz? I mean, they love you so much, they sing hymns in praise of you as if you were uh, the centre of some religion. When you come to a point where people start to sing songs about you, it sort of touches you and, you know, it, it means you're doing something right. Olé, 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 olé. Every religion needs a cathedral. What distance will it be from there to there, did you say? Yeah. And they're raising yeah. one down in Melbourne in the AFL Heartland. Eight metres from touchline to the first. The grounds have always been ovals, 
Now there's a new shape in town. A rectangular stadium in the very heart of AFL country. What does that say? Oh, look, for me personally, I didn't think it would happen in, in my lifetime, certainly. Um, but uh, I suppose it just goes to show how far we've come as a, as a footballing code. Was there ever any doubt? Melbourne Victory's Kevin Musket can't wait to move into the team's new home, soon to become holy ground for Victoria's soccer fans. I've told all my friends to become members this season because if you remember this season you get a priority to become a member and, and you certainly hopefully won't miss out. And buy your corporate box soon, eh? And, and get in one of the boxes, yeah, because uh, I can't play them forever and I'll be sitting in one of those hopefully. But for now, like the rest of the A-League, Kevin's main goal is beating Gold Coast United. Jason Kalina scores! Going after the big blow. I'm sh pretty sure after we play him, he'd, uh, he'll know who I am. After you beat them? Yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed. You sound like him. <laughs> no, I'm pretty confident. If you don't believe you're going to win, you know, you're certainly not going to win. It's a deep one. It's right, and it's turned in, and it's 2-0 for the Gold Coast. Clive Palmer's Gold Coast United is shaping up to be the team to beat this year. Clive's happy about that. But whether it's about kicking goals in the field or winning metal from the ground, in business as in sport, is it simply about being the biggest bloke in the game? You don't own a football team for ego? No, I don't. I own it, I own it for enjoyment. We play very positive football. We try to score as many goals as possible. And we're really saying to the people, the kids, everyone watching, if you've got, this is your opportunity, this is your life, make the best of it. You saw it, the reaction we got from the crowd. And isn't that satisfying to think you can stand there and there'll be a couple of hundred people wanting to shake your hand because they're happier than they were yesterday. What's wrong with trying to make people happy? Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.